process of incarnation. Can you see what? Do you have any questions about that? So can you just unpeel that again? You've got a masculine and feminine split. <coughs> the masculine part of the soul will be attracted to a male form. The feminine part of the soul, if it's predominantly masculine, it will be masculine form. Of course, the soul split can be male male too, but they are complementary halves of the one soul. Does that make sense? They can be female female too, complementary halves. So from our father's perspective, there is no bisexuality of the soul. You follow me? Bisexuality is created from, and this is going to be challenging for some too perhaps, bisexuality is created from the emotional injuries that occur during your, during your life here on earth. And in fact, some people here are actually a gay soul and they think they're straight. <laughs> Right? Because and you feel that way because of some injuries that you actually have from sexuality from your parents. Does that make sense? These things really damage us uh, completely. In fact, at the time of incarnation, incarnation occurs a few, uh, after conception. Within usually the first ten days, incarnation of the soul occurs. When I say incarnation, there's a feeling that most people have of sort of go, jumping into the body, right? But what I'm what I'm going to suggest is actually a connection, an energetic connection between the soul, the soul actually, the half of the soul connects itself via an interface and there are two interfaces that are connected. Uh, one of them is called a silver cord, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. And one is, one is a golden cord that connects, the silver cord connects the material body with the spirit form and this, and the, this golden cord connects the, the spirit form with the soul. And and that is the way the soul experiences its world. So at the moment, you need a physical form to feel natural in a physical environment for the soul to absorb its experiences in this environment. When your physical form dies, you will be left with a spirit body form. And initially, it will look similar, perhaps, to the one that you have. And I'll say perhaps because it depends on soul condition. But it may look similar to the one you currently have. It'll be recognisable, certainly, by you. And that is now the form by which you experience all of your sensory inputs into the soul. You could think of the spirit body and the material body as just robots used to experience a different dimension. Does that make sense? All right. Now, the incarnation process occurs at the time usually within the first 10 days. In fact, most of you ladies who have had children, have, some of you may have felt that actually occur, where you knew you were pregnant before you had the test, not because of menstruation, but rather because you just felt something happened to you inside of yourself, like someone else was there. Right? Now, a lot of women describe that process. So that is the time when the soul incarnated. That's when your child incarnated. Now, from that moment, your child is absorbing every single emotional experience through its in interface. So while it's in your womb, <coughs> ladies, your child begins to feel everything around it. Now, if you're having an argument with your husband, the child is feeling it. If you're feeling upset inside, sad, your child absorbs that sadness. If you have an emotion within you where you're uncertain about your sexuality, your child absorbs that feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you think about it, a lot of injuries happen before you're even born. And it doesn't have to be that way, but the only way that it can't be that way is for the parents to release all of their emotional baggage so that when the child comes, they've got the best possible life that can be offered to them.